Hi, we're Equine VIP. I'm Susan Ashbrook, and we have a special treat. We're talking to Rick Pelicano and Diesel. Hello, Diesel. And um, the reason that I feel Rick is so important for us to talk to because Rick is not only an officer with the Mounted Police, but he is also a teacher and an author. One of the books he's written is How to Bomb Proof Your Horse. And because he's a teacher, he not only works with the horses, but he also works with some of the riders. And he gets a lot of the very young uh, horses that have potential of being a police horse. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, some of our some of our horses we've taken in as young as three years old before. We have one three-year-old now. We actually we've had two this year, so it's not unusual to have them that young. It just depends on the horse. And at three, can you really tell if they're going to be amazing police horses? I don't know if you can tell they'll be amazing, but <laughs> you can kind of tell by their disposition, you know. But you know, like any three-year-old horse, they got a short attention span. But um, you know, you kind of just assess their personality and demeanor, and, and sometimes it's better almost to start with a young one because then you don't have to worry as much as of how much baggage they might be carrying with them that you're not aware of, and that's, that's what right. that's what that's part of the problem when we get donations. Sometimes donations are okay, but you really have to assess what's going on. Do they have a health problem? Do they are they coming with a lameness that you're not aware of, or are they coming with some baggage that they've got a mental you know issue? Now, tell us about how the donation works. Well, we take horses, um, we're not really worried about breed or color. Some departments are very specific. They need, they want a certain color. Uh -huh. We like them 16 hands or higher. And then once we decide to take them, they're on a six, uh, 60 day trial period. So we have 60 days to um, assess the horse, see if they're, we think they're gonna make it as a police horse. Now, your book, How to Bomb Proof a Horse, did the idea from the book come from your years of being uh, an officer? With the no, the idea for my book actually came from um, uh, Jeff Kleinman, who's a literary agent. We met and, you know, I got a few offers and I ended up going with Trafalgar Press. They, they're great people up there. So I'm actually working on the second one right now. Mm -hmm. And the second one's, it's, I wouldn't, I don't know if it's an advanced book necessarily, but it gets into some different things than the first. And part of that is schooling your horse and the importance of doing that. I didn't go into that as much in the first book, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's basically you going in, into basic schooling thing, what we do for our police horses and why it's beneficial and how it helps you to um, manage your horse under stress and how it helps with this whole bomb proofing picture. And I'm interested in your book because you know, when I'm coming out on the trail, I don't know what's going to happen. There's a deer that may jump out or right. something like that, and and your book sounds like it would be really helpful. Well, you know, dressage, a lot of times when I do my clinics, a lot of folks are put off by that. They think it's some boring, snobby thing that, you know, rich people do with their horses, and it doesn't really mean anything. But dressage comes from the military. That's who created dressage. They, they taught their horses to fight in battle. Um, with that, and that's really all it is. And if you, you kind of, I have to remind my officers that because when they're uh, when they're first learning, they they don't come from the horse world. We're showing the, showing them tapes of uh, you know Grand Prix dressage, dressage riders, and they think I'm not doing that sissy stuff. <laughs> but I have to remind them why that's important. We try to teach our officers to think about when they're riding in traffic if they've got a an issue or they see something being a proactive rider seeing something up ahead to put their, put their horse and shoulder in so the horse can take a look and see where the real threat is. It's it's a good way to manage your horse. It's a, it's a good way to get your horse to walk in a creek for example without keeping from you know horses sometimes want to jump it. That's right. But if a horse's legs are crossing they can't really act up too much. That's right. And if you have that vehicle um, for you, that little tool in your box, it's a great tool to use. That's just one example, but, and that's why I think dressage is important. Rick, can you tell us some of the most dangerous things that a mounted uh, police officer and horse would encounter in your job? Well, that's kind of a, it, it can be different things. I mean, danger can come from just riding in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the things that I guess the public thinks most about is crowd control, like we just saw the G20 here in Pittsburgh and all the problems they were having up there. So we do that. We're a fully functional, full service mounted unit in the Washington DC area. We're actually in Montgomery County, but we do things in conjunction with um, US Park downtown and the DC Police Department. So we've worked the bigger demonstrations downtown. We work University of Maryland for some of their problems. So crowd control, you have that situation, you have that that going on. I mean, you, you've got an angry crowd throwing stuff at you. Um, um, we don't use, they don't use tear gas much anymore, but they've got um, 
we deploy pepper spray a lot. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be able to deal with that, the noise. You can't communicate with one, one another. You know, you know, so you kind of have to watch what, what everyone's doing because it's so loud a lot of times. So that's, that's the thing the public thinks about that you get it, that, that can be dangerous for you too. You know, then there's the occasional breaking up a fight or you know, doing things like that. Now, I think in your book, you talk <clears throat> about the comfort zone, am mm -hmm. I right? Yes. Can you explain what that is? Comfort zone is just, um, and the, the best example I can give you is if um, somebody fired a gun about a quarter of a mile from here, he could hear it and so whatever, and it probably wouldn't bother him. He'd say, oh, what was that? But if I sat here and did it right next to his head, yes. that would bother him, it would bother me, it would bother you. Yeah. So somewhere in between that, there's a place where he's bothered by it, but he's, you're not, a, he's not unmanageable with it. And that's a, tr that's a starting point of training that horse with that particular thing. Mm -hmm. And you can find a comfort zone with absolute absolutely any any kind of situation you want to train your horse with whether it's walking over a tarp and tarps another good example if you're gonna, if you want your horse to, to, to learn to walk over things you don't have to necessarily train them to walk over a specific thing but if you get them walking over a series of things pretty soon you'll get to the point where you can just go up to something strange and he's gonna walk over it because you've gained that trust with them uh -huh. so if I use a 20 foot tarp for example a 20 by 20 tarp why would you start out with a big tarp like that if you think the horse is going to be a problem? You fold it into Small, about a right yes. one foot, yeah, and the horse yeah. can walk over it. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, using progression, but you you can find where his comfort zone is with it, so you don't you don't have to get in a fight with your horse. Right. It just really doesn't resolve anything by yeah. you know getting in that argument with your horse once you find a comfort zone to work in. You've got another book coming out. Yes. Do do we have a title for it yet? Uh, the publisher has suggested. Better Than Bomb Proof. So. Better Than Bomb Proof. <laughs> so watch for Better Than Bomb Proof with Rick Pelicano.